In order to be efficient in Photoshop, you can create a batch process. Batch processing is an editing feature in Photoshop that allows you to apply a set of editing actions to a group of files with just one click. It's a great time saver and makes you very efficient when you're working with the same repetitive step over and over again. So what I want to do is I want to show you how we can batch process our images that we took for the stop motion project. I have a folder that I've named batch and inside that I have a folder called original capture. And as you can see, this folder contains 150 images. These images are all fairly large in size. They're roughly about three megabytes. The physical dimensions is also very large. Now, ultimately, I want to use these images to create a stop motion video file but the images are a little bit bigger than what I need them to be, and they're also not rotated in the proper orientation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Photoshop to batch process all of these images so I don't have to open every single one and do the same set of steps over and over again. I'll start off by opening one of the images in Photoshop. In order to create a batch processing, you're going to need to record every action that you want to include as part of the action set. In order to do that, you're going to want to open up your action panel. I'll go to Window, Actions to open the action panel. And as you can see, I have some preset actions that have already been included with Photoshop. What we're going to do is we're going to make our own action set. I like to store my actions in a folder so that I can stay organized. So I'm going to click the folder icon to create a new action set. We'll name this action Stop Motion Edits. I'll click OK. And as you can see, I now have a new folder. Now I'm ready to create my action. I'll click the little plus icon right here, which is going to create the new action. Once you do this, you'll need to give the action a name. So I'm just going to call this Stop Motion 1. It's going to be stored in my stop motion edits folder and I'm not going to assign a function key to it. So I'll just click record. At this point, every step that I perform in Photoshop is going to be recorded and stored inside of this action. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the image. I'll go to image, image rotation, and I'll rotate clockwise. Now I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'll resize the image down. This image is far larger than what I need it to be. So I'm going to reduce the height to about 1200 pixels. This will automatically change the width because the width and the height are currently linked together. I'll click OK and you can see the image has been resized. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a JPEG image. I'll go to File, Export, Save for the Web Legacy, it's going to open the legacy dialog box and for this particular project I'm going to save this out as a maximum quality JPEG. This will reduce the file size down from about five and a half megabytes to 1.4 megabytes. The reason I'm saving this as a maximum quality is because I ultimately want to use this image in another project so I want to start with a high quality image. I may go ahead and downsample the images later but this is what I'm going to do for this particular example. I'll click Save. It's going to ask me what I want to name the file and where I want to save it. I'll leave the file name at its original name. I'm going to create a new folder inside of Batch and we'll call this Optimized. I'll say Create and now I'm going to save the file. And at this point, I don't want the file to be open anymore, so I'm going to say File Close. And I don't want to save the original, so I'll click Don't Save. Now at this point, my action panel has disappeared and that's because I don't have anything else open. So I'm just going to go ahead and open a new file and it doesn't matter what the size is at this point. And as you can see, my action panel is still recording everything that I'm doing. At this point, I don't want this to be part of the action set. So I'm just going to hit the stop button right here to stop recording. These are the steps that we've recorded. It rotated the document, it changed the image size, it exported it, and it closed the image. If you twirl open any of these triangles, it'll give you specifics in regards to the settings that were used. Now it also recorded me making a new file. 
I do not want this to be part of the action, so I'm simply going to select this step and I'll hit the trash can to remove it. It's gonna ask me if I wanna delete the selection. I'll click OK. And now that's been removed from my batch action. At this point, I'm ready to run the action on the entire folder of images. So what we'll do in order to run the actions is we're going to go to File, Automate, Batch. This will open up the Batch dialog box. And here's where we can go ahead and specify any of the settings. It's going to be running the action called Stop Motion 1, which I want it to. We need to specify the source folder. These are the items that I want to apply this particular action on. I'll click Choose and browse for the original folder. The original capture folder is what contains all of the images that I want to run this action on. So I'm going to select that. I'll click Choose. And then the next step is if you want to change the destination. So I want the destination to be my original folder. So I'm going to select Folder, we'll click Choose, and I'm going to click my Optimized Folder and choose that. If you don't choose a folder, then all of the changes are going to be saved into the same folder. And because I did not change the name of the images, they will overwrite the originals. In many cases, that may be fine, but for my example here, I want to make sure that I keep my originals intact. I'm not going to change anything about the file name, although you could add a file name. So if I add a name of stop, you'll see that in the example it gives me a preview of what the file would be named. Because I have multiple images, it would probably make sense for me to add a number. So I'm going to add a two-digit serial number, and now my image would be called stop01. And we'll want to add an extension, so the extension is part of the naming process. For my example, I am not going to add a custom name. I'm just going to use the original names because they pretty much are all in sequential order anyways. So I'll just leave this as is and we'll click OK. And at this point, Photoshop is going to go ahead and do its thing. If you watch in the action panel, you'll see that the actions are going to be running. We don't really see anything because this is happening so quickly, but if you keep your eye on the tab up here, you can see that different images are being opened and it's performing these changes on these images. At this point, you could just go walk away and do something depending on how many images that you have because Photoshop is going to run without you having to be involved at all. As you can see, if we check in the optimized folder, the number of images is going to change and update continually. As Photoshop runs through and performs the actions on every single image, it's saving a new version of the image in this folder. The new version of the images have all been resized down and rotated to the size specifications that we specified. They've also all been saved as JPEG files. Photoshop will continually go ahead and run the action set until it's completed the process. You don't even have to be here for this to occur. Once it's done, you'll have full access to all of the images with the actions that you've specified being applied. I love batch processing. It's a very convenient way to apply tedious and time-consuming edits that you're going to perform repetitively over and over again.